all my journey, I have learned another lesson. You do not have to fight alone. Welcome back to the HCC, the Ducks taking on B Genius, hoping not to lose to them as B Genius currently still does not have a match record win yet in the standings, currently 0 and 11. And we're going to need something from them, man. Yeah. Last time it took us to get all the way to game three before they showed us any flavor. I want flavor now. We need definitely something that they can pull off here. I have to say, by the way, coming from this break, it's always awesome to just see these trailers that we have there. Especially that battle with Genji and Diablo mm. and then Deathwing coming in to save him there at the end. That was pretty awesome. Uh, this troll. This guy. This guy. What better ground are we going to? Shout out to Reddit. For our next uh, matchup in this best of five. Please get the camera off of me. There we go. We're going <laughs> to the battleground. It's going to be B.O. Baited. And we're getting that flavor <laughs> in. I, I feel so bad because they were so all in on the whole, like, Deathwing is definitely coming out. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about either, man. Battlefield of Eternity here. We have our second map coming up. And as is, again, the choice of Pichinus. And this is where one of the things that we have been talking about a lot. Most of the teams that we have on the European server prefer to have first pick over map choice, but Pichinus is a little bit different. So they could have a strategy prepared here that can really push playing Ducks to the limit. And that's exactly what I want to see, the flavor that you've yeah. been asking for. Last time we saw them play, they pulled out their Tracer, and great, let's see it. The thing is, they did reveal it, and now the playing Ducks, obviously watching those games on Friday, are aware the Tracer is a pick that they're willing to use. And the thing is, the playing Ducks used to be known for running Tracer themselves. Yeah, exactly. So this is one of the things that we could see here from them too, but we have also to watch out for Medivh once again. Mm. Sport Billy is going to be looking for that hero. So yeah, let's find out what exactly the genius has planned for game number two. Let's figure it out indeed. In fact, let's go ahead and pull up the last draft here because I want to see what they went for before they went into the Tracer. So they went to Vola, Varian, Tracer, Tassadar, and Karazine. They banned out the uh, Grey Main first just to get rid of it and get it off the board, which makes sense. Grey Main's one of those great counters against Tracer. The go for the throat can be enough for them to burn out. The playing Ducks is banned out Tassadar, and now B Genius. Let's get a feel for what they could be evolving into. I'm really curious to see what's coming out of this one. Also, another good counter against any kind of Zeratul Tracer is, as we've been talking about before, Varian. So that might be one of the things that B Genius might either want to pick up for themselves or ban out. They go for that Medivh, though. As we just said, Sport Billy is so strong on that hero. And yeah, they lock it down. So Medivh already out of the question here. So playing Nooks have a lot of choices here they can move into right away. The Gray Man is probably the one most recommended for it being BOE, and they can play it well. They can also move into the Vala, which is a staple of the playing Nooks. They've been doing it for time after time. They move straight into the Gray Man, and that'll be their first choice. Gray Man is fantastic on the map for the pressure against the Immortal. It's also just brutal to have him in your back line, and they're going to exploit any kind of weakness that they can get here. So yeah, be genius. How do they open the map up? There's still a Vala, of course, with an arrow build. Absolutely fantastic. If you want to chunk that Immortal down, that's one of the tools you can use. Sylvana sometimes being played here as well. That could be another tool that they're using to get some more momentum and uh, accelerate the match. Let's see if that'll be the move that they move into. Vola Oriol can be a good one on this battleground. Oriol usually not getting picked up as often due to the fact that uh, she has a harder time with entertainment strikes. And if she gets engaged upon on this battleground, there's so many small corridors that they fall victim pretty quickly. So usually you see the Lucio instead. They're actually taking a fair share of time to get those heroes in right now. I would be shocked to not see a Vala. They are running Vala basically every single time they can, and there is no reason why you would not jump on a Vala early on here. And Arthur's for the team fighting and the control. Wow, wow. and Inubura giving up Vala. Okay. 
I mean, there is always a strategy of you running double tanks and just controlling the area and then going in for the engages, but that requires proper rotations, and I think as a team you have to understand your limits. And the rotations usually in the early game are solid because they can get a pickoff or two, but when it comes to mid to late game, they just fall off heavily. They get out-rotated by every single team in the HCC. Ben Sylvanas, pick Vala. Then there's no uh, immortal pressure anymore. Yes, they can go for Lunara, but Greymane is going to laugh in the face of her. So... Vala Aria On here? any other map, I would have said Arthur's and Nuburak, go for it by any means. But right now, I'm a little bit scared that Be Genius might end up in a scenario where they have to win the team fight or they cannot win a Punisher race. I think playing Ducks didn't even expect that because of how consistently Be Genius was picking Vala. So I would either pick Vala or I would ban her. She is a tool that Be Genius, first of all, uses a lot. She's fantastic for the immortal pressure. There's other heroes that he can use for poke. We've been talking a lot about Li Ming, for example. Li Ming is being picked here to combo off with the Greymane. We've been talking about that combo quite a bit. So the poke on the side of Li Ming, trying to chunk targets down a little bit, and then Greymane capitalizes on uh, the uh, low targets with a quick kill delivers the resets to Li Ming. So that's very nice poke that they have from both sides. But now I would just simply ban out the Vala. Yeah, that really screams to me that we're going to be having the race on the Immortals. You have your Grey Main, you have the Innervate on the Li Ming. You just stay away, basically. Don't let Arthas ever get a flank on you. Keep an eye on him. You have Scouting Drone here from Malfurion. Could even go for the uh, cooldown reduction on the Innervate at level 1 and just keep dropping into Li Ming and let her keep orbing left and right there. Uh, so the playing Ducks is a good foundation for the Battleground. Be genius more about control and looking forward towards that control see what they'll be banning out here now as they have an option. Uh, if you don't want to deal with Engage, there is always the option of Varian, but honestly, they can handle Engage with Arthas and Anubrak. Yeah, I could see also a Sonya, by the way, again on the side of the playing Darks. Great pressure against the Immortal. Works against what's being run so far. Okay, banning out the ETC. Not want to be trapped by any kind of Holy Cow combination with the Sanctification plus Mosh Pit. And they know that that front line can't be trapped with the setup that is being run here. That's an oldie for Chris Explosion too. The Vala ban was obvious. We've been talking about it. So this is really one of the tools that Eugenius loves to use. And I'm very curious to see what the damage she does on the side of Eugenius are going to be now. I think it's likely that they might pick up the Sylvanas again. They showed her in the last match. So it could be that this is another game where they are saying, hey, Sylvanas is giving us value. And I would agree with that. And the Sylvanas is actually strong with this, but she cannot be the only one who delivers the punch in the team fight. Yeah, you don't have DPS to kill the Immortal, so how can you ever win the Immortal too? Uh, which well, is pretty scary. Sylvanas has the Bob Tread after level 7, so that helps True. actually a, a lot. But you need someone in the team fights themselves that can deliver on point damage because Sylvanas usually gets a lot of the damage out out before the team fight really starts with just poking with a shadow dagger and then once the engagement happens she just empties the quiver and yep. after 13 then tries to get the resets on that going with a quick wave and then delivers a bit of a punch there but with that setup that we have the playing ducks running you need someone else who is the main damage healer or at least gets a bit of burst into it wow so that was the other hero i was thinking about falls have been picking up he can also do pretty decent damage he gives you the ability to soak on the side and whatnot but the playing ducks can just sit and poke in the immortal phase and play safe, so they don't have to ever watch out for a mighty gust. So Falstad really all he does here is he gets experience advantages. Yeah, against Greymane you have the static shield that you can use, so that can really help you. I don't even think that at this point, I mean, you have to wait for the, for the tanks, of course, but at this point you don't even have to go necessarily into a full auto attack damage. You can get the boomerang hybrid coming and later on you can even think, if you go into Static Shield, about just getting Tailwind and uh, the Aragus just to make sure that you have the cooldown reduction on those, that you get the Static Shield up a little bit faster, and you can play around that. Falset is of course also great for the Disengage, it's another tool that they can use with this, if they feel that Ducks are jumping in, but for me the big question is just what is that frontline going to look like? You can either go down the uh, path around Tyrael, Varian is also around, so the two of them, Johanna would be an option, but I don't really think they need that. And they go, okay, there we go. Sport Billy with a Zara tool and a Muradin. Yeah. This is going to be a Tigus pick for the finish. This reminds me of like the first couple weeks of Beat Genius. The Falstad, Rhaegar, double tank, and then they throw in Tychus, And this is what they used to run all the time. It never worked out for them, but neither did a lot of other compositions. I honestly don't know. I would have said Sylvanas would have been a good pickup for them. I would not combo that with a false set though. I would have some used something different here. So 
Meridian and Zaratul, by the way, not going for Sonya here. The Zaratul, I like that even more because even though a false, uh, sorry, Medivh is banned out and false are taken, it gives Sport Wheelie the third hero that we see him play all the time. And his Void Prison setups are absolutely awesome. We've talked about that quite a bit when they were playing, I think, Team Liquid back then. And now he is also going to be on false set all the time in these backlines. So uh, needs to be careful here since he's up against the Arthas and the Nubarak. But Vigenius is obviously in a spot where they drag out the timer because they know this is going to be a rough one. All right, it's time to see here. It's going to be Tychus for their final pickup. So Vigenius going old school here. We saw this for the first few weeks of the HGC. They really seem to favor that Tychus. It does work out against Muradin. It's one of the few heroes that can burn him and make him go away from the fight. Uh, obviously, if you get third win, you can just pop out and come back in as Muradin. It's going to be a bit of a, a difficult task, but in terms of control, we do have that here on the left side for BGDS. Now, if you run something like a Muradin Zero Tool, then you always have one situation. We've been talking a lot how people should never go also in their own games for a triple backline because it's too vulnerable. You always want to have a melee assassin or a second tank next to your main tank, just simply so when the main tank gets focused, he can retreat. You still have someone that holds the front so that the damage dealers are not directly being engaged. With Muradin Zero Tool, you have that interesting combo where if Muradin gets chunked down and has to leave, Zero Tool cannot fill that spot. So he's the one who is usually trying to flank in. He tries to get a setup with a Void Prism. He's trying to jump the back line and get a kill there. So that puts a lot of pressure in this game now on Muradin, where Tychus comes in and says, okay, I'm going to chunk that guy down. I'm going to make sure that with the bigger they are, I'm going to get the value. So the front line has to be really careful. But Zeratul, to control him, that's going to be the a big question here. Can they control Zeratul? Because we have seen incredible play out of Sport Billy, and if he puts the pressure under the back line, then even if you put the pressure on Muradin, it's not going to help you to an extent where you can win that fight. Well, we'll see if BG just has the answer here. We're going into game number two, Battlefield of Eternity. BG just looking for a win against the Playing Ducks. B Genius is indeed looking for that win, but they are down one game in that series. They are starting to the left. They have to turn this around. Arakane on Tykes. Tank for the win on Anubarak. Unstable on Rega. We have Danatan on Arthas and Kirva on good old Falstad. To the right, the playing Ducks. Wolf Joe on the Malfurion. You're going to see him going for those Twilight Dreams again. Chris Explosion playing on the Murd. And Sport Billy will be played by Zeratul. And here we have Chris on the Lee Ming. And last but not least, Nande on Greymane. None on the Greymane here. And as expected, Sport Billy on the Zeratul. So we can uh, see how much he's able to do here in that back line. Of course, against Arthas, you always need to be a bit careful when you're playing Zaratul. A lockdown against you is most of the time deadly, and also the uh, Frozen Tempest can reveal you if you sneak in too fast. But Zaratul play on the side of Sport Billy has been nothing but spectacular so far. So he's he's doing work on that hero. Watching out, Sport Billy keeps sharking on the left side. Chris Ogden will hit a score ball on tank for the win. He does get chunked. Kill potential in the early game is a bit rough here for the Ducks. We're gonna see if they can pull that off. Unless they get on top of Kirva. Wow, that was really close. Luckily, he's able to barrel roll away and not get hit by Chris. Yeah, especially with Chris's follow-up. Of course, Zeratul is gonna do some work here. And if that combo would have hit, that could have been the first kill here. But the barrel roll saves Falstead for now. Also, Etherwalk used for Chris again here in those team fights with Calamity. That can uh, give you a lot of damage potential. That it can take for the win. Taking some damage here on the oh. left, by the way. Eric, he step forward, chasing after that sport fill. He gets low on health. The bite will come out. Chris Explosion will survive for now. Uh, but yes, the Aether Walker really bringing in the damage when you use that Calamity. Also great for repositioning because you want to be able to siege down the opposing mortal. I actually really enjoy that talent on this battleground. Yeah, one of the things that is also important here is right now, Pijinus is looking at that Muradin as a solo frontliner. With Zeratul being more so the flanking hero and not really someone to hold that front line, Muradin, there's a lot of pressure on him, and Bijinus is going to try and exploit that by putting the pressure on him whenever we ha they have the bigger they are ready later on after level 4, whereas the playing ducks are going to look for these setup kills with Zaratul in particular. And they also have a very nice poke that they can use on the Immortal, and we already see that happen. Both of the teams are starting to raise the Immortal fast, and with Greymane and also Li Ming, Playing Ducks are just way faster when it comes to the damage that they can put on them. Yep, even with Deantan sitting there on the side trying to peel off the pale from Li Ming being helpful. Nande got some great attacks in. And we're now going to see the final race here as our two teams will attempt to get as much damage as they can off. Ducks should win this pretty easily here as long as Nande sitting on top of it. And there he is. 
chunking it down. They'll get the lead, and now we'll have an Immortal, the first one going to the Ducks. Immortal on their part now. Both of the teams on level 3 still, so waiting for the level 4 talent to be taken. Immortal moves down to the bot lane. So let's find out how much pressure they can get in with this. Already a Stormball attempt against, yes, that's the root as a follow-up against Tank for the win. Bit of extra free damage pushed in, but he can still move behind the gate. Zeratul is currently holding the speed up to the top lane. And down here, we have the pressure play. Breaking through the wall, trying to net themselves an experience lead that they can use here. I like Chris Blosion constantly going in and using the Storm Bolt on a Nubrak. Some players would try to go for the all and kill on Kirvois or even Tychus, but they have mobility spells. Just hit your Nubrak here, which makes that front line weaker and makes them use a Burrow Charge to retreat so your carries can move in and get a little bit more damage in on the wall or, of course, a fort at the situation that really presented itself. Now, if you've been watching yesterday, you might remember that we've been talking a lot about False Set in his level 4, but hold that thought. And Nubarak, that you've just been talking about, has been taken out. A great kill here, but Chris Plosion running very low and moving back. Oh, oh, hang on, pulling back here. We're going to have a kill on Nande. However, we're going to have the bite back onto Rhaegar. So two members have fallen for B-Genius, one for the playing Ducks. All four members in the bottom, though, they do miss out on experience as Zeratul rotated down to help out in that fight. Now, I have a question for you because I don't get it. Shoot. Why do we have in the rhythm on level four for Tiger? To burn down. Oh, that's actually a really good question. Uh, you can get a decent amount of attacks on the Murden, and then just maybe you don't get the heal on 13. Maybe we're going full auto attack build. I'm very confused by this pick because in the, usually the bigger they are is really an excellent talent if you have a single big hit point pull tank on the opponent's front line because it's the only one there. You have one target. If you burst that target down, he has to leave and the front back line is open. Normally when you're trying to go for something like in the rhythm, a talent that has fallen off heavily, then you want more targets that you can use so you can stack it properly and then you get that damage out a bit more. So this is a bit confusing. The pressure against Mirrodin was one of the key things that I personally had locked down for myself what B-Genius needs to do against the Mirrodin play here. And they are currently running a different approach. I'm very curious to see if that is having any value for them because I certainly didn't see that coming. Yeah, have value if Dantan's able to get on a line here like Malfurion or someone and actually chase him down and slow them down for that overkill to be effective, but it is one that is quite difficult to pull off. We'll see if Eric King can be effective with it. Right there, the moment the minigun was used, Chris Explosion jumps away. Also, again, Relentless Soldier used on the level 7 for Tychus. So he is a bit afraid of those Muradin stuns in particular, but also the roots that could come down here. Roots could come down. I'm watching this uh, rotation here. Zeratul is pushing the top lane, which makes Arthas go back to defend. Chris continues to poke here on the left, looking for Unstable. Does chunk him, as well as getting some damage on the Immortal. Now, we've gotten to a point where the game has slowed down slightly due to us being at our level 7 talents. Yeah, here can we go again. Uh, roots and stuns. Relentless Soldier gaining definitely some value. Nanda jumps in, tries to get the kill against Arakane, but they're moving out, and this time Chris in a bit of trouble, but Tank misses the stun, tries to go in. A good cleanse from Bulcho coming out as Kirba flies to the side, tries to flank, does not get the killing shot in, though, against any of these heroes. Nanda's still a bit low, but Wolfjo should have a heal ready in a few more seconds. Zeratul, knowing that false that just uses flow or his fly, rotates down to get aggression on him. The moment he sees a new back attack, is so that does indicate that the playing duck should put damage on the immortal. And false that picked up the gathering storm. Uh, sorry, the. Uh Oh, I'm blanking right now. Picked up the uh, Static Shield on level 4. A talent that we've been talking about yesterday quite a bit against Melee Assassins. We had some uh, discussion about the potential builds on Force Set. And of course, if you are going up against an Illidan, Greymane, Zeratuls, then uh, Static Shield is always a good option for you since you want to stay a bit safer when that hero makes this play against you. Yep, trading damage out for shields can't go wrong when you have those Melee Assassins near you. Continue to work in your auto attacks too. Uh, playing Ducks have started to etch out a victory over these Immortals here. They got, what, 30% already burned down on the first one. They continue to poke with Chris here as he keeps dropping in those missiles. And uh, the Playing Genius team has gotten a couple of trades Paul's overall. Dad in fights. trouble against Zeratul for a moment, but Sport Billy had to move back since Kieva used the Static Shield and traded well there. But these explosive bursts that Sport Billy is currently bringing in are definitely a problem. Tank trying to come in from the flank for the stun, but a good blink from Zeratul keeps him in safety.
Good patience, too. The moment Rhaegar came in, he could have blinked right away. He took the bite, and then with a the new rat coming in, he was able to dodge the CC. That could have been maybe lethal for him. So great heads up play there by Sport Billy. The Immortal Phase has started the halftime show as the playing Ducks take a massive lead in control. In fact, there's barely been a scratch on their own Immortal. Yeah, that lead is also because that play was made for Zaratula their bot lane, and it was not successful. So that moved two more heroes down to the bottom of the map. Falson was already going back to the Nexus to heal back up again, so that allowed the playing Ducks to put the pressure on. But Genius is able to grab the earlier level 10, so they have a bit of a timing window. Chris with a jump here. Wow, incredible jump there. Almost getting caught with that level 10 window hitting. Playing Ducks get their own 10 now, though. We'll start to siege here. Void Prison, Twilight Dream. Going to be having the Avatar. And Grammy waiting on his heroic. It's going to be the Cursed Bullet. Way before here for Lee Ming. Going for that front line. So once more, there's Arthurs being attacked. Bullet is out there, jumping in. We see Sport Billy coming in from behind. Falset is there, trying to hunt him down. Sport Billy needs to be careful. Gets the slow in, nobody dying just yet. Cocoon on the side of the Nubarak. Kirwa low. Oh, mana here has to be quite careful. Bejin is so still losing out on the Immortal phase. Finally, they get Falsa to the top to start working on it, which has indicated to the playing ducks they should go for the engage. They still have their Void Prison, but do remember Bejin has Cocoon. Genius has indeed the cocoon, the love bug going in, and oh. that's their kill. And Nobarak is down, Void Prison in the back. Kierva flew in and found himself immediately in trouble, needed to retreat here. The team is split as we are seeing the Ducks making a play for Immortal number two, and they are looking strong here. That's a huge shield that they're going to have on this Immortal. 13,000 health. Gonna be a shield here for the playing Ducks on their Immortal. Should be pushing in the top lane. Yes, it will be. They have yet to kill a fort, but now is the prime opportunity for them to do so. Get that gray man, get the Murden in the front. That Skullcracker being a pickup for Murden as well, allows for him to help control in these fights. The Immortal is always pushing the lane that is the least pushed. So, so to say, the lane where your opponent still has the most structures available, the most defense, and that is what we are seeing with the Immortal up to the top lane right now. Playing Ducks, trying to make that play again. Odin popped by Arcane in the back. Trying to burn it down as fast as he can. Zaratul is moving back down to the bot lane, trying to make a play for the false set. This is going to be a battle that we're going to see throughout the entire match. Yep, whenever false set tries to get experience, Zaratul goes in for the punish. In fact, Zaratul is even diving a four, possibly. Kirvoir hoping to stay safe. Take for the win, turns around and engage on the plane. Ducks in the top right corner with Danatan leading the charge there on his Arthas. Wolfjo is going to be using the Twilight Dream play. Ducks going for the engage. Yeah, our ancestral hits though. Zaratul died in the meantime at the bottom of the map. A cocoon has been used too, and Kierba flies in to make that a 5 versus 4. Cleanse used on Nanda. He's about to escape. It gets body blocked by Chris for a moment, but is able to move out of the way and to safety. Impressive cleanse there. Now Danatan low on health and mana gets focused. Chris Plosion jumps in, and he is a healthy, healthy tank here. Now just getting as he gets turned around here. Tychus is actually burning him down. Tychus burns him down here, so we have a trading kills again. Oh, it was a good move, though, by Muradin originally, but then he could not get out there. It's interesting, actually, that Zeratul died to false set. It was mainly because Spot Billy was willing to dive a fort to make that kill happen. And you could see it on the hit points that he was just completely outmaneuvered there. So in this case, a bit too greedy, aiming for that kill, and B Genius walks away with a kill against false uh, sorry, a kill against Zeratul and a kill against Muradin at the end. Still a lead in experience for the playing Ducks and an early level 13 talent. Yeah, they definitely got a couple kills, but the Ducks got a four instead, which has given them that slight lead here as they just now hit 13. Sport and Billy is on tank for the win. He will use the Burrow charge to escape, but he is getting low on health. Nande coming in for the chase. He will use the impale at the last second. Chris jumps in and misses. Tank for the win. Will Juke and Jive and survive? Uh, tank gets cleansed here. We have everyone retreating. It's a really awkward spot for the playing Ducks, though. Here comes the Void Prison, catching one of their own heroes, though, catching Muradin. Should be able to move away. Oh, but Cocoon is locking him down, and Danatan coming in from behind. Danatan gets blown to pieces. That is incredible. The playing Ducks came over and stopped Arthas before the rotation happened, and then they came back and saved Chris Bolton, who was in the Cocoon. All five members are alive, and they walk away with a kill. Once again, Curse Bullet being used to burst Arakane down a bit. Graven just spams those out. That yeah. cooldown is so short, he just goes in and says, well, you want some? Here you go. It's he refreshing to see a lot of Graymans wait for a combo to get set up before they use it for it. Just drop it in. It's a low cooldown, especially if you're not near a fight. Exactly. They knew that there wouldn't be a team fight, so he knows the next one is going to happen at least 30 seconds later, so it's all good for him. There is Chris Plosion in trouble. 
Good interruptions there. He went for the jump at the last second. The grenade came out from Tychus. Did I see that right? That the Immortal would actually have pushed the, all of them away, but then the halftime show started and the Immortal held the stun back? I believe that's what you saw. Wow. Muradin would have been safe if not for that. Unfortunate timing. The Ducks, though, heavily in the lead when it comes to the Immortal pressure. All oh, VGDs will bring their members over to defend. Kirbaugh moving in for a big rotation. He does have Mighty Guts. That's a very unthankful Immortal, by the way. Your team helps you to win the race, and then you just let someone die. That just felt bad. If I were Muradin, I feel betrayed at this point. As he should. Yeah, he should. The Purred Dwarf, the second time it's happened to him in the history of his life. We're going to have the Ducks over here on the left oh. going aggressively for Kirbois, but with Unstable around for the rotation in the heels, Sport Billy will be forced to retreat. Yes, but once again, the Immortal should go over. Two of the playing Ducks, they're doing really well here to the right side now that Grey Mane has entered the stage again. And even the camp is getting triggered here, so they want to catch the camp at the same time. The Immortal is going to move down to the bot lane, as we don't have a fort to the top, but we have still one available at the bot lane. The Immortal moves there and tries to take that down, and now with the camp being captured at the same time, it's pressure on both lanes that Vigenus has to deal with. Yep, the Ducks with double the push and double the fun here. Pressure on the top with Zeratul and that mercenary camp, and now the Immortal starts to trudge its way down to the bottom of the fort. It will be leading the charge here. Chris goes in for a big orb. It connects with Eric Keen, the instantly unstable will heal. Uh, so, once again, the fort is about to fall. We have the move in. Also, Void Prison is available. That's a big, big tool at the hands of the Ducks, and we have Zeratul already moving in from the side. He charges straight in, he looks at Rhaegar, gonna drop the Singularity Spike, he gets Cocoon though, instantly here, as the new Brock is saying, no, we will not fight. Yeah, they didn't want to get uh, uh, want to get locked down by the Void Prison here, so they can retreat. That was worth the cost for them, but the wall at the keep is about to fall, the Immortal on the other hand is also about to die, but level 16 talents are so close, and Danatan is isolated. The Void Prison to completely leave him away from the support, there's no Ancestral Healing coming through because of it, and that is a secure kill for the Ducks who now take 16. Chris Motion turns around for the Storm Bolt, starts to hit on top of Tigers here. The Ancestral Healing is money though, as Unstable will be able to keep Air King alive. Kirvo comes in, it is 16 to 15, there is a Mighty Gust available, so the BG Genius team will be forced to walk away. Very well done by the Ducks here so far. Of course, it didn't result yet in any big structure taken out, but both of the forts have been dropped. They're looking for a keep next. And of course, they still have also camps to take on the map. And with a talent advantage for the Ducks, they can play a bit more aggressive now. Sport Billy on the rotation, always hunting the Falstad. Falstad playing safe enough, though. <laughs> will live through that gank that would have came through his way. Now, 16 to 15, as you mentioned, the lead here heavily in the playing Ducks. They're taking everything they can. The bottom mercenary camps, the top mercenary camps. And now it's all about not dying and finding a way to get into an engagement when Void Prison comes up. And that starts in about 35 seconds. And what I pointed out during the draft is now actually happening. The flow rider is taken and the area gas can be uh, taken later on too. So it's really an attempt on the side of Forza to stay safe against Zeratul. Since the fight has been going on throughout the entirety of this game now. We see the two of them going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And with that cooler reduction, you just find yourself in a spot where you get the static shield a little bit more often and that keeps you safer. Normally, you oftentimes see it against a Muradin, then still Giant Killer have been taken. Giant Killer would have been the aggressive version on level 13. It would be the idea, okay, I want to do damage. We want to drop Muradin faster. And this is just something where he says, I need to keep myself alive somehow. And this is the tool that I can use. Sport Billy was looking for the Void Prison. Kirva sniffs him out. There goes the Static Shield. Void Prison has been used. Void Prison is in. They try to get the combo off. Not perfect, but it's good enough. Ancestral keeping Kirva alive. Well done. And now the turnaround attempt against Nanda. Cocoon on the ground. Nobody deals with that fly-in as Sport Billy is being chased, but the first one to die is Greymane. Yeah, BG is actually getting the first kill. A second here as the Malfurion comes out of the cocoon with the hammering sliding in. Malfurion has fallen, and Bee Genius gets two pickups and can move towards the Immortal. Yeah, Muradin, on the other hand, up at the top lane now, wants to get value, and he will open that wall up with a camp that is pushing. False at the one who's attempting to fly over, but this is definitely a great opening for Bee Genius to get some momentum going for themselves. They are on even, not only even talents, they are on even levels, and they will see elite and experience through this. So this is a, definitely a big opportunity for them if they grab that Immortal now. And the Ducks with 10 seconds left before Malfury comes in. Greymane just now spawning here. are going to take what they can on the Immortal as it trades here. On the right side, they get a little bit of damage in and actually put it down to a pretty substantial size here with only being three available for them. 
Now with the Immortal spawning, it should head to the top lane here for Bee Genius. There is still a fort for defense. It was actually pretty impressive damage output they had there. 50%, a little bit less, but there is again that fight, the idea to just lock someone down. Solo frontliner, Chris is trying to keep himself alive. Chris Plosion is so low, it could fall any second now and gets taken out. The tank is gone and we have Zeratul also falling. Every single tool in the arsenal used by BG is, and all of a sudden the ducks are in massive trouble. That they are. 40 seconds for three members of spawn. They have Li Ming and Malfurion for defense. Li Ming can start to chunk and poke from here, but this keep is definitely going down. The core as well could be taken out if Chris can't get any pickoffs. I'm not sure if they can really go for the Koi with only 25 seconds, 20 seconds on Muradin. That would be a bit greedy. With the 20 Tala, I would completely agree here, but I think right now they need to be cautious that they don't overstepping so the Ducks don't have a chance of taking a few kills here. But the keep is definitely down, and that Immortal has a fair chunk of hit points. Are they really going to make that play? It looks like they're going to go for that risk, even without the level 20 Tala. Muradin is back. Zeratul still has the Void Prison. That's a big, big tool to use now. Yeah, so we're really walking in, the Void Prison gets used instantly. They look at Kirbal, they start to focus him down. He's low on health. Nande goes in for the sleeve. The Mighty Gust going in at the same time, though. The Immortal still it. large, 20% yeah. on the core. The Playing Ducks will lose to BG this year, and the series will be tied one to one. I definitely misjudged the power of that last Immortal there. Even with the Void Prison, there was no way for them to save that. So the BG genius all of a sudden with a victory. Well done. And uh, yeah, a good call there in the end. Even the Void Prison could stop that for long enough. Too many damage dealers around, so good job. And be genius. It's, it's one big team fight with that Immortal, and they are able to turn this around. Yep, one big team fight overall. Works out for them in the top right corner. They push in with the four, they move in on the key, but of course they end the game. And I think they really sort of feel themselves.